What's going on, Creative Family? It's Dustin Volcom, and welcome back. Today, we are talking about rim lights and how to paint them in Photoshop. Uh, a lot of times, I use this to match my subject's lighting to the background. If I wasn't able to do that in studio, I've been using it in my studio shots just to add a little bit of an extra flare at times. Um, two useful techniques we'll be using the curves adjustment layer as one of them, and then we'll be using a normal layer to paint light onto our model that way and uh yeah it's a good one guys i will see you in photoshop and make sure to like comment and subscribe catch you in a moment all right guys so here we are in photoshop with our awesome image from the shoot that i did with chaotic neutral cosplay here recently and leah absolutely nailed this shoot and what I really like about this is just kind of the mood that we set with the gels already. And I just wanted to paint a little bit more of a light source here uh, to the camera left, um, sort of behind her, maybe a rim light coming from fire. And so in preparation for this, guys, what I did is I cut my model out from the background. If you haven't seen my masking tutorial on removing your subject from the background, I uh, will leave that linked in the description, um, end screen, and a card here in the video so you can check that out. And then for the background, what I did is created a very rough, almost clean plate um, type of image just by clone stamping um, the very edge of my model and shifting that in so that as I started painting light, there wasn't any weird artifacts or anything um, competing for attention here. Now, before we get started with painting, let's grab a light source here and we can just use this flame. Uh, these are part of my flame kit stock pack. I've got a link in the description if anybody's interested. Shameless plug. And we'll set this guy here to screen and create a layer mask and paint those out quick. That works just fine. All right, so what we'll do is we'll actually start with how I go about doing this with the curves adjustment layer. Um, I really like this part of the process here because of the way that it really gives a nice fall off to the, the sources or variations in material that already exist on our subject. So we can just head into a curves adjustment layer and then begin to fiddle around here with the different points in our curves in each of the individual channels. Now to start working with the curves adjustment, uh, what I'll typically do first is hold on Alt or Option and click right in between our subject layer and the curves layer to create a clipping mask. Uh, you can also do that down here in this little box with an arrow icon. And that would just mask all of the adjustments to our subject as we make them. Now, in the RGB curves, um, typically what I'm doing is looking to just raise the, the exposure overall. And in this case, I'm primarily looking like right on the edge of the face here to see how a rim light might react in that situation. And so we'll, we'll boost that up just a little bit. Let's see, head into the red channel. Uh, we can put some reds in there. Uh, green channel, we can pull that down to introduce a little bit more magenta. And then in the blue channel, we can add much more of a yellow warmth to this. Awesome, and that should work. So that, now that we're finished with this, um, we can press Control or Command I to invert our layer mask. And what this is going to allow us to do now is paint this light anywhere that we want on our model as it's already masked off here with a clipping mask. All right guys, so now we can start painting the light. So looking at this image with the light coming uh, from her back here. Let's do a quick markup. This is something that's often fairly good to do just so that you know um, And can see exactly where you need to paint light uh, We'll say, you know light source is here And it is coming this way 
but sort of, you know, it's right behind her shoulder there. So the light's essentially going to be hitting right on this rim of her face. Uh, maybe a little bit of a cast on her lips there if we just want to do that to emphasize it. A little bit on the nose here, uh, right along the bottom edge of the hair. And then obviously wherever you're catching um, this incident angle here of anything else that's really reflecting the light there off of the fire. So with that in mind, uh, we can start painting here on the layer mask for this curves adjustment layer and working all of that light into our face. All right, that's enough talk, let's get painting. So on the curves layer, we're using a white brush. Uh, this is typically for me, a soft brush uh, around maybe opacity 30 and then my pen pressure sensitivity is on. Flow can be whatever you want it to be to build up the effect that you're going for. So for us here, what we're going to do is just grab uh, white as our foreground color, and then we're going to begin painting right along the edges of our model here. And we're looking to build this up fairly slightly as we go down. And once we get to the chin area here, I typically just follow that in just a little ways. Um, adds a little bit of definition there, whether that's actually needed or not, uh, we can deal with later. But I'm looking to see what I can do here. We know that the nose will actually need some light, so we'll keep that there. Maybe a little bit here on the outer eyelid. Now when I get to hair, uh, depending on the actual composite that I'm doing. I may place a little bit more emphasis uh, on certain strands than others. And sometimes I'll, I'll actually do that a little bit more once I get to um, painting with just a normal uh, paint layer. And I'll show you that here in a bit. As far as the nose is concerned, with her head turned this way, I think that the only real reflected um, or like incident angle to this light would be right here on the front. And so what we can do is we can paint this little rim in here. And typically what I like to do is paint it in hard and then I can soften it up um, with a negative or a black fill brush afterwards. And so I'll paint that a little bit strong there. Maybe follow up a little bit down here with some light on the lips. Just to have that there. And we can grab our black brush. We can go back over some of this and just start to fade this away some. So it's really essentially just going until you get the look that you're that you're really wanting. So in our case, what I'll do is, uh, for speed's sake here, I'll just bring my opacity up to 80, and then we can just start to paint around some of these areas that we know are going to be getting this rim light anyways. I'll do the underside. I typically like to just paint there because it gives it just a slight hint of color uh, rather than a, a very hard rim. This is typically why I like using curves because it still respects the light to dark values that are going on here. So some of them, it brightens them quite a ways, like on the face where it's a much you know light, uh, lighter skin. And then as it moves into some of the darker leathers, it just adds a little bit more of like a color than actual blown out whites in that area. Alrighty, and so now the next area that I actually want to look at because the axe would technically be reflective is just painting a little bit on this edge here, uh, just to hint that there's light that would actually be hitting it this way. And we can do that really on both sides and the top and the bottom there. So now you can see at this point that we're definitely adding another light source to this. And from here, what I can do is just create a new layer, 
create a clipping mask for that as well. Now we can select one of the one of the brightest colors here. Uh, if you hold Alt or Option, that brings up your eyedropper, and we can select one of the lighter colors of the fire. And then you can use that with a fairly low opacity. We'll say 30% on ours. And then you can just paint right along these edges. And this works really well uh, with your darker colors because then you can really introduce some of that more bright or, you know, white light in that area. Just to make sure that you can see it quite well. So we can do this all the way and work our way throughout the model uh, where we want this, this effect to be. So for the sake of speeding this up for you guys, I will just continue on uh, with this white brush so that you guys or sorry, with this uh, normal paint layer so that you guys can kind of see how I'm using it. Um, and then I will get back with you here after we're done. All right, guys, so now that the painting portion of this is done, uh, if I just toggle these off and on here, you can see the effect that um, this fairly simple method of painting the rim light here uh, really kind of helped place a little bit more separation um, from the subject in the background, especially if I turn off the fire layer there and I did go a little bit heavy here on the edges of say the ax handle and um, and her body there uh, that did get masked off fairly well uh, with the fire. But in any case, uh, this is pretty much the process that I use quite often to do it. Um, sometimes it's a little bit more extreme. Other times it's not quite as extreme, but hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something here today on how to do this fairly quickly. Um, the more you do it, the better you'll get with it. And yeah, it works well. All right, guys. So that wraps up my process on how I paint rim lights in Photoshop uh, for really studio or composites. Uh, like I said, sometimes it can take long. Sometimes it's very fast, depending on the light that I'm trying to mimic. Um, Hopefully it was fairly easy for you guys to follow along. Uh, what I will leave you with is that this is definitely one of those things that you understand better the more you play with light. So grabbing a subject, uh, a model, uh, a pop bottle, whatever, throwing rim lights at it, taking a few photos, moving the lights around, um, just kind of seeing how the lights react to different materials, how they react to skin, um, and so on. It just it, the the more you know, the better you can get with this stuff and faster. So, yeah, that's it, guys. In the next video, we are going to cover how to uh, fake gelled lighting um, with rim lights, which is basically more just changing the color of, say, just a white diffused rim light, and how we can turn that into a fake gel, so we can introduce more color into our model. So. Yeah, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.